Hi, this is Cindy Pressgrays with Real Estate Divorce Single Mom. And today I'm going to talk about when we look at houses, what to think about and what to look about and what we see as a realtor and how I can change your perspective on different things. So as a listing agent or, you know, as a realtor, we can be representing the listing, uh, the, the seller or the buyer. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of things that go into it, a lot of details. So it's really, really important to pay attention to details. So when we go as a listing agent, when I, whenever I represent a seller, I always tell them, hey, please take out your personal things. Like you don't want to let them know about divorces. You don't want to let them know about any financial situations. That's why we, when we go ahead and tell you guys, hey, you should actually take care of these things or start packing some of these little things so you can actually be like, okay, the house is ready to go. We don't have to negotiate back and forth. Sometimes that's why we, we actually encourage you a pre-inspection, which is amazing. And a house is basically the reflection of yourself. And a lot of people think that's that's like, nah, that's being silly. No, not really. Yes, yeah, sometimes um, I can walk in different type of houses and I can see like what is going on with a person. Um, internally, they don't have to say anything. And I'll be like, okay, so what's really going on? Do you have a situation? Um, do you have any fin finances? Um, and sometimes they don't have time. They don't have time for the upkeep. And it all depends. I mean, sometimes they're out of town a lot or they're going through a divorce. They're going through a separation. So whenever you walk into a house, it's uh, it's really interesting because I've seen houses with people having pictures like um, exes on their ex-husband um, or their potential ex-husband or, you know, they're going through a divorce. These are things that you don't want people to know about especially because they'll try to take advantage of the situation. A few months ago in my own community, there was a there was a house being sold. And this is another thing that I want to tell you guys about. When you're going through a divorce, and, and this is basically part of it too, but when you're going through a divorce, it's making sure to find the right agent that will take good care of you. So even though both parties disagree, I would always just check on reviews and, you know, just present it to the counterpart or the, the other party as well. But going back to the personality uh, of a home or how we actually determine things is, you know, a person that can be in the hospital a lot or a lot of medications, health issues. You can actually walk into the kitchen and you can see like hundreds of bottles of medicines or, you know, books Books are going to tell you the person's personality, what's go where they're going through, like, hey, how to get over a divorce or how to, um, you know, if they, you can actually see like, hey, seven levels of communication. And when you walk into my house, there's going to be a little bit of everything. But me personally, I've gotten rid of all my divorce books, but I have more of self-improvement, motivation, uh, business, uh, cookbooks, healthy cookbooks, um, things like that. Um, help, help, um, self improvement in my in my case, but in other words, I've seen. I, I, I mean, there's some of the uh, like I, I've walked into houses and I've seen like law books. I've seen medicine books. There was a um, a house that I went to. I think it was like sometime last year, and the husband's clothes was not in their in their bedroom, but it seems like they were separated in the master bedroom. So whenever you walk into a house. Some of the things are going to tell you what, what the situation is in the house. Like, and I don't know if you guys believe in this or not, but the energy, you can actually feel the energy if there's any conflict or not. And that's also very important. Um, clearing, um, like the, cl the cleaning, cleaning the house, making sure that it's well from the, from the entrance, very entrance of the driveway up to the inside of the house to the backyard. And, you know, sometimes they're, they're working parents or, they're um they're working all the time that they're like hey you know what i i don't have time for this but it's all going to be there um sometimes people just don't want to they they they're not that organized or anything and sometimes you walk into apartments or condos it'd be like okay they're very very organized but this is why as a listing agent we tell people hey you know what let's go ahead and Make sure that everything is neat as possible. You start packing those important things, those important pictures, those precious items. Um, 
So uh, a house that I walked to a few weeks ago, there was, I walked into the master bedroom with my client and there is no, uh, she's married, there is no men's clothes. So we automatically knew that the house, that she was going through a divorce. It was really painful for them to talk about it. I mean, it's usually we don't talk to the seller, but sometimes there are situations that the sellers representing themselves or there's another agent involved or the agent is their, the seller. And that's why I say, Hey, some, at times as we become emotional through aspects and I'm going now to the divorce part, it's really, really important to go ahead and separate emotion from business. And sometimes as an agent, we cannot handle both, especially when it comes to our own properties, because there's going to be a attachments there's going to be memories especially as a as a as an owner you know you want that house to go to someone that is going to be um cherishing that property and taking care of that property as well so that is really really important but in this case i would say it's really important for you guys to understand that when we tell you as an agent hey please start packing your personal items and taking care of your house and fixing these things Talking to an agent, if you're talking two or three years before listing your property, hey, that is not a problem. You're going to be like, wait, what? Two or three years before? Hey, you're actually working down your pipeline, which is actually really, really important. But in this case, some of these houses, look, they need to be taking, they, there's a lot of work on it. Um, I, uh, I, I went to a listing appointment like, I think it was like two months ago. And they, when I looked at their house, I was like, look, you guys need to replace your roof. Your roof is, it needs to go ahead and, and be replaced. So they went ahead and replaced it because I don't want to have any issues with that or any negotiations be like, Hey, you know what? Can we just, uh, we just want the, the price to go down. And that's one of the things that, Hey, when you're talking to a listing agent before listing your house, it is always to look and follow their direction. We know what we're talking about. Well, okay, some of us. Um, <laughs> but in this case, it's really important. So now what I'm going to get to is uh, the divorce process. When you're actually going through a divorce, yes, it is hard. Believe me, it is a roller coaster. Uh, divorce, breakup, I can tell you different stories that I'm actually, I, I have a, uh, a client of mine that has been going through divorce, even the fact of after divorce. Um, I have three scenarios here. I have a client that has been through a divorce or is going through a divorce and they're like, Hey, okay. So it's really important for you guys to follow direction instructions, especially that divorce decree. If you guys are completely divorced, um, sometimes the other party will work with you, but it all depends on the circumstances. What's really going on. Divorce is harsh. Yes, it is. And as an agent, you can get three transactions, which is you just sell the house, the new ex-husband, the ex-spouse. And I mean, that those are three transactions. And sometimes it's going to actually wait a little bit longer. But when you're starting to work with someone that is going through the process, it might take not one or two months, but it can actually go ahead and take a few years, depending on if it's taken to court, uncontested, if they're actually saying, hey, you know what, let's just work things out or not. And sometimes at times, the couple decides to go ahead and work things together. So those are different things, but this is going to be a roller coaster of emotions when you actually deal with a couple that is going through a breakup or divorce. Now, if we have a couple that has already been divorced, but then it's like post-divorce, there's other circumstances. So it's really important to understand what the divorce decree says, but at the same time, we're not a lawyer. We're not... Um, we're not an attorney. We're a real estate agent. So we always send those documents to the divorce attorney, not the divorce attorney, to the real estate attorney here in Georgia. So that way it would be like, okay, so that way you have an attorney on hand saying, um, all right, let's go ahead and this is what needs to be done. I had a client, we closed on it last year, and the house was under her ex-husband's name. Her name was not on title, but she did not know her name was not on title. But because of the divorce decree, the divorce decree said that it was supposed to go ahead and um, all proceeds were supposed to be split in both. So in this case, they both worked it out, but I had to present those documents. So it's really, really important to always have the divorce decree, have those on hand. Even if you're selling, even, even if you're buying, it's really important. Now going through the buying process as a divorced, um, 
okay, in my case, I've been divorced twice. I, every time I, if I buy a house, every time I buy a house, I have to present those divorce decrees because it's also going to take into consideration child support. I get child support. If I were to receive alimony, all those things count into, um, as an income, um, child support, alimony, uh, what else? Any type of additional income that you receive, that is really important. That's why I'm saying you always, it's really, really important for you to go ahead and have a, the divorce decree on hand. Now, when you're, you're divorced, all right, now we're talking about post-divorce. So when you're actually post-divorced, Divorce is completed. Now you have the divorce decree. The divorce decree, make sure depending on what party it says. Um, now I'm dealing with a different client that she wants to buy a house. She's a nurse. She wants to buy a house. But they recently found out that her husband, his ex-spouse, has a house under his name still. And she has not refinanced it. So it's really, really important to actually Make sure that when you're when you're getting divorced and when you're divorced completely, that things are follow through. This wouldn't be, and I, I again I tell you guys, I'm not an attorney. This would be a family law. This would have to go through the courts and all that. Um, depending on what situation is, depending on what state it is, it all depends. It varies by case. So in this case, because they were divorced, I think it was like eight to ten years ago. Now it's actually pulling off his credit. Um, they didn't, they stopped, she stopped paying the house a year ago. So this is going to affect him. But because of the divorce decree, she's actually in contempt, um, in contempt. And now they have to go to court. They have to find a lawyer and it's going to take a little bit of time. So now the house that she wanted to purchase, then that's going to be a different story. Now she has to be, wait a little bit longer unless she wants to go ahead and put that house, uh, that new house under her name, even though she's legally married and all that, but she, they won't be able to count that, that her husband's income or credit. So that's really important to know, to know what, what aspects and what ways your guys are going to in this, in this situation. Um, she can actually afford a house on herself. That's not a problem. But if she wanted to get a bigger house and use her husband's income, she wouldn't be able to. But now the husband has to deal with this whole mess in the background because she didn't, she didn't go ahead. Um, he didn't, she did not refinance that house. So it's always really important to know, check on your credit after divorce, even a few years, um, even a few years into the divorce, it doesn't matter if you got remarried or not. Make sure that she doesn't have a power attorney, um, that everything's complied by divorce decree, and just check on your credit and make sure that you don't have any additional houses under your name. I'm saying this because of experience. I'm not trying to say, hey, you know, this is what's going on or anything, but things happen in this case. And in this case, that's one of the situations. Um, sometimes both parties agree. Sometimes parties don't agree. Um, there's another one that is post-divorce that because of the divorce decree, even though they bought, they purchased a house after, uh, I think it was after she bought, she purchased a house after she, she got divorced. They were going to get back together. Now he never lived in the house. The name is under his name. So always keep things in writing. It is really, really important. Any type of, um, agreement you have. With a person that you are with or purchasing a house, it's always very important to have something in writing and notarize. So if anything happens later on in the future, be like, oh, you know what? No, we never agreed onto this. No, you have it notarized and you save yourself a headache. Believe me, trust me in this process. I know what I'm talking about because I've seen it happen. Um, it's always good to have things in writing. Like I said, black and white is more is more valuable in court than words. And especially if you have it notarized, then they can you can actually fight that. And like I said, I'm not an attorney, but I'm a real estate agent. So I would say, if you have any questions about this, talk to an attorney. Um, so that's another thing. I mean, there's so many aspects that sometimes we think as a real estate agent or as a person, normal person, we don't even know or even think about, oh, you know what, I, I trust them, I trust them. All right, tell you the truth. Once that person gets into a relationship, oh no, that becomes a monster. A monster, okay? I'm definitely telling you. And sometimes it doesn't, nothing changes. So it's very important to get, actually make sure that you guys are being amicable with each other. But 
Anything in writing is really, really important, especially in court. In real estate, we always say if it's not in writing, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't say it doesn't mean anything. So like I said, anything that you are in an agreement with, um, always say I always say it's in writing. That's important. Let's move forward. And you know what? Whatever you're you're doing with your spouse or your ex spouse or wh whoever you're doing, that's as long as it's not in the contract or it's in the contract. That means it's if it's part of the contract it involves me. If it's something that you guys are doing, that is not my problem. I'm not part of it. So, um, in situations, um, let me see what else. Hmm. We've got the divorce. We've got documents. We got um, the significant other. Um, and at times there's, you know, there's the ex-spouse helping the, the spouse that to purchase a new home. Okay. So now I'm going to talk to you guys about something that's really important. Um, when we're spouses and this could be qualified for men or women, it doesn't matter what sex you are or anything. It does not matter. And I've seen this a lot. And actually I've, I've seen this happen to a few people that are close to me. Look, people, I love you guys and I appreciate you guys listening to me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. If you get married, that's awesome. That's wonderful. But think about the future. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to set this plane out there. Um, make sure that you have something on you have credit that you're building credit. I've actually worked with a couple a few years ago that she's a nurse. Um, he works, I can't remember what he works in, but anyways, previous clients of mine, they were trying to buy a house. They bought a house. The wife makes good money. The husband makes good money, but she didn't have anything under her name. Her car was not under her name. She didn't have a credit card, nothing. Look, I, I, I also had a friend. I have a friend that everything was under her husband's name. Nothing was under her name, her car, her even no, no utilities, nothing. Even the phone was not under her name. She got divorced. It took her almost two years to go ahead and be able to purchase a home because she had to build credit. She, she had to uh, build credit. She needed to, you know, start all over again because nobody would give her a loan because she didn't have nothing under her name. So those are things that you guys have to take into consideration. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying, but make sure that you have something under credit, that you that you have something under your name. And you know what? There's times, and this has nothing to do with divorces. When you purchase a property, and I'm not a loan officer in this case, I'm not a loan officer, I'm not a divorce attorney, and I'll tell you this all day long. But I'm just saying, so when you're actually purchasing a house, at times, there's no need to have two people purchasing a house because you know what? You can use the other spouse and just buy it a second home. So there's there's different tips there. So there's no need to um, to do that. If you wanted to, you can actually go ahead and let's say, for instance, the spouse makes more money than the husband. So we have the the spouse under her name. Uh, the spouse is has the, the house under their name, and then you can be entitled. So that's really important. So in that way, you go ahead and do that and you still have the property in your name, but it's not affecting your credit or anything, which is awesome. And you always have the right of survivorship. Okay, so now I'm going to get into that. So right of survivorship is really, really important. So let's say, for instance, if your spouse, if either party were to pass away, the property goes automatically to the, to the spouse, the living spouse. So that means they don't have to go through probate or anything that saves you a headache. So these are little tips that's going to help you. Um, it doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're a real estate agent, you're not, you're just listening to this for fun and finding out what, what else you can find out. But these are tips that are going to help you a lot. And going back to credit, it's always important to have something under your name regardless. And I'm not saying, oh, you know what? Nah, I just trust my, my, my spouse and all that. Look, life happens and everything changes. Anything can change in the blink of an eye. And all of a sudden, hey, you know what? We're happily married. And we're like, oh, crap. We're going, what? What's What just happened here? Divorce? We never thought about this. We never, we never, we never talked about this. We never saw that coming. Life happens. 
And at times, it yes, it's gonna it's gonna hurt, it's gonna suck, but we keep on moving. And like I said, anything that I say here is just to help you guys. Um, I I've, I've been through two divorces, and I'm I have no problem saying that. Yes, at the beginning of my first divorce and then my second divorce, I was like, oh gosh, you know what? What are people gonna say about me? Look, I live and I learn, right? Being divorced does not make me a horrible person. I'm not. I, I, it doesn't mean that I'm a failure in life because some people judge a book by its cover. And honestly, I'm I'm okay with that. But sometimes people concentrate on 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 your past, and that's not that's not important. Your past is who made you today, who you are today, who you become today. Not about your past and all the things that you've gone through. I mean, it's just like. I was talking to someone yesterday um, and he was like, well, that's a red flag having two divorces. I'm like, okay, you don't even know me and you're judging me already? Oh yeah, like interesting. So I'm a single mom too. But that does not mean that I'm a horrible, horrible person. It means that, you know what, things don't work out at times. And I'm not saying I'm not blaming it on my divorces or anything, but I'd rather be happy on my own than be in a toxic relationship, being in an unhappy relationship, being in a happy marriage, because I don't want my kids to grow on there. And it's okay to get divorced. And I'm not saying I'm pro-divorce, well, kind of, but like I said, everything happens for a reason, but you need to find your happiness. If you don't find your happiness, you can't expect to see and see what, oh, because I'm not gonna get divorced because other people say I shouldn't get divorced. No, do people live in your shoes? Of course not. Do people know what's really happening? Of course not. I mean, I um, it was like a year ago, two years ago, I was actually working with a client and she was not married, but she had been in this toxic relationship, toxic and domestically abusive relationship. And I asked her, why are you not leaving him? I mean, in a, in a times, there's nothing I could do about it because... That I I don't have any control on what people are doing or what their what their intentions are. You know, I'm not in their shoes. All I could give her was fo- a few phone numbers. And at times, like I said, she would come bruised and all that, and she would come in a, as a wreck. But she was trying to do things behind his back. But she couldn't leave him. She was afraid that she would that he would kill her. And sometimes it's really hard for people to get out of that those circumstances. And like I said, don't ever judge a book by its cover. And now that I'm actually in the books by its cover, let's get back to real estate. Um, in this case, uh, a few years ago, don't ever judge anybody by, you know, by the looks. That's like basic 101, sales 101. Don't ever say, hey, you know what? Oh, he looks like that. That means he can't afford anything. No, that's not true. You know, sometimes... People don't have to dress like how much how much money they have. They're probably working. They're probably saying, hey, you know, let me just look at this. I was talking to another agent and he's like, you know what? I learned a lesson that um, he always portfolio people. He always profiled people from the very beginning. And one day he had this client um, in a van. The bump, the front bumper was falling apart, like falling down. And he came into his office l- wanting to look at a, I think it was like a $20 million home. And he's like, well, you know, I need proof of funds. Something happened. Anyways, he didn't get, he, he basically uh, didn't work with that client. A week later, he found out that he had bought a $17 million home in cash. Now, on that same note, because of that, I remember this is like when I was 22 years old um, or 21 or 22. And I used to work when I worked at CompUSA and I'll never forget about this. I was working uh, working at CompUSA. CompUSA is like Best Buy. Um, Then it became Target um, Tiger Direct. So before of that, before that, um, so I used to do computer sales. It was called hardware sales, which I sold computer laptops. I was in one corner of the store, and there's this guy that came in with a NASCAR coat, BMW NASCAR um, jacket, and you guys will read about this in my book too. So 
he came in and he was looking at a at a at a memory a RAM memory for a laptop for a computer, and yes, I was in a corner store. I was you know just talking to we're in a lot of groups, um, but nobody approached him. So I came from one corner of the store to him, and he looked at me. He's like, "I've been here 15 minutes, and you came from the end of the the store that other corner of the store just to help me." And I'm like, "Yes." I'm like, it's customer service. I saw that nobody was helping you. So let me just go ahead. It was not even my department. So little did I know, he was the general manager of BMW in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And he gave me his card. He's like, call me tomorrow. I have a job for you. Look, I'm 21 years old. I have no idea about cars. I have no idea. I mean, I, I'm basically uh, going to college, full, uh, full-time, full part-time job at uh, CompUSA at that time. And I, I was like, that actually impacted me. And when I saw that, I was like, no way. I'm like, no. So that actually, like I said, it impacted me. I, you never judge a book's by a cover because you never know who you're talking to. This world is about connections, communicating. Don't ever mistreat anybody how you have, like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to mistreat that person. Because you know what? At the end of the day, you never know where you're going to end up. You don't, you never know, you never burned your bridges. And, and sometimes you do burn your bridges because you don't want to go back. I mean, that might be a job, that might be a relationship, that might be something. But when something is meant to be, it's going to be meant to be. No matter how many, um, how long does it take? You might end up in, in those people's shoes. So it doesn't matter. Or they might end up being your boss. Or you might end up working with them. So it's life is life is so funny at times because it's it's really, really interesting. So this world is about communicating relationships, developing relationships, and not judging the books by a cover because it's about evolving every client as well. So that client that might start with a $150,000 home, you end up helping them little by little, little by little, you know what, through the years, every three to five years, all right, now your home is 150,000, this was like five years ago, let's go ahead and upgrade, um, let's get you upgraded to a to a bigger house three to five years later. So it's about communications as well. So like I said, this is, I talked a little bit of um, homes, about like analyzation about your homes, divorces, and never judging a book by its cover. So you guys have questions? Till next time, Cindy Press Grace. Have a wonderful day.